Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and in this mini Unity tutorial I'm going to show you how you can quickly and easily create cutscenes. So cutscenes are a vital part of pretty much any game that you develop. And I have a scene set up here and you can obviously use it in any scene that you have. And I want to use a combination of three cameras including animations to perform the entire sequence. So firstly I'm going to have a camera, so game object, camera. So I want to have it about here. Let's rotate by 90. I'm just going to have the camera pan around for about three, four seconds. So animation, create, and let's call it anim1, save. Now record has automatically been pressed for me because I am actually using Unity 5.5 for this tutorial, but it works for any version of Unity. So you may need to press the record button. So we're doing 60 frames a second. So the first keyframe we need to type in 90 on the Y to ensure that, that rotation is set. In addition to this, we may need to click this little option here, go to interpolation and quaternium. So next thing to do is let's do this over the course of, let's say, a total of five seconds. So we may go a little over, we don't really need to. We'll do a bit of extra animation just in case. So that'll be frame 300. So by the 300th frame, I would like this animation to be about there. So stop that animation. Next, I want another camera. And I'm going to bring this camera over here and I'm going to make it look upwards. And I want to make it look downwards over the course of a couple of seconds again. So what we do, create animation and we'll call this Anim2. Obviously press record if you need to. First keyframe let's set as minus 31. So over the course of five seconds, we will set this to look down to the ground. How about there? Press that record. And finally, let's do another one. So you could use it with as many cameras as you need to, as many sequences as you need to. There's no limit and there's there's nothing you don't really need to worry about as long as you're prepared to create that sequence. So let's do this again. Animation, create, and let's see, let's call this animation three. Let's follow suit, shall we? And let's set the first keyframe as where we are. So minus 159. And by 300 frame, let's have this looking over here. So let's stop that animation. Now what we need to do is take each of those cameras and remove the animator component because we don't need it. And we need to add in the animation component. There are two different things. So type in anim in the search and you can get it right there. So the next thing you need to do is add in each of the animations. So camera was anim1. So add that in there. Size also 1 and add it to there. Same with camera 2. That was anim2. No problem. Size, one, drag and drop. And the same with camera three. Into there. Size, one, and element zero. So next thing we need to do is we need to take these animations, go to debug, so we click this little option up here, and then set to legacy, back to normal, wrap mode once. So we need to do that for each of the three animations. They need to be set as legacy and they need to be set as just once. So you'll see all this come together pretty quickly now because we've got the animations that we need and we only need the first camera set active. So we can select both of them cameras and turn them off. Now here comes the scripting bit. Right click, create C sharp script and we'll have this as scene sequence. So within this sequence, what we need to do is we need to set in our start the coroutine of whatever you want to call it. So let's get rid of void update and any notes and let's set our three cameras as three variables. So public game object cam one, public game object cam two, semicolon, and public game object cam 3. So void start, what we need to do is do a coroutine or start a coroutine. So start coroutine and in brackets let's call this the sequence. Open close bracket, close bracket, semicolon 
And now what we need to do is start an I enumerator because we're going to be using a yield. So I enumerator and we called it the sequence. Open close bracket and open curly bracket. Let's go down a few lines and close curly bracket. We should see the sequence turn from red to black, at least if you're using mono develop. So as this sequence is going to start with camera one, which is automatically going to run because it's set to play automatically. If we press play, we should be able to see this happening. So we don't need to worry about that. The first thing we're going to need to do is wait for, let's say, four seconds. So yield, return, new, wait, four seconds. Four. After that's done, we need to set camera two as active. So cam two dot set active is true. Then after that, set cam one as inactive. So cam one dot set active false. Now it's always a good idea to turn a new camera on before you turn an old camera off because you may end up with a slight frame where there's no camera rendered if your game is maybe lagging behind perhaps. So once that's happened, we need to wait for another four seconds. So yield, return, new, wait for seconds, another four. And then we'll set cam three as active. So set active, true. And then set cam two as inactive. Cam two dot set active, false. So we don't need to set cam one as false uh, for set active because it, it's already off. We don't need to worry. So at this point, the whole sequence will play as expected. But if you've got a game to run into, at this point, you could put another yield, wait for seconds, four seconds, and then turn on your player and turn the cam three off. So if we save that sequence there and head back to Unity, game object, create empty, and I'm going to call this cut scene sequence and just attach that script straight to it. And then it's just a case of attaching all your cameras to the variable. As simple as that. So now that sequence of events of playing this cutscene should pan out perfectly. Let's have a look. And there we go. You can see that whole sequence of events is bringing this cutscene together. So at this point, the scene ends because there's nothing further for me to actually build into the scene. But obviously at this point, you will have your game. So you will just code it to start your first person controller and turn that camera off. And it's as simple as that to create a cutscene. So guys, I hope you've learned something and thank you very much for watching.